Hello. 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 Make sure when you're using dry ice that you have adult supervision. My mom used to work at a science center and she used dry ice a lot there. So we have an expert on hand. dry ice my friends and you can't touch it because it'll give you frostbite and she knows a lot about frostbite dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide the main three states of matter are solids liquid and gases this is called dry ice because it skips the liquid stage and goes straight from a solid to a gas this process is called sublimation So now that we've done the explanation, why don't we get to the fun part and start doing some experiments? Do either of you guys have a spoon? Of course, I always have a spoon on hand. If you take a long spoon and touch it to dry ice, this happens. I'll hear that screech once again. <laughs> what? Once again. Are you <laughs> so, the reason this happens is because the warmth of the spoon causes the dry ice to sublimate faster, which causes a lot more air to be released, and so when the spoon is on there though, the air gets kind of trapped between them, which makes the farting noise, because it's trying to push away the spoon to make it release, and it's just crazy. Like your booty cheeks. So dry ice usually comes in a big block. These are coming apart. But yeah, this was like just one of the corners of the block that we got. And for the experiments that we're doing today, we're actually going to need to uh, use smaller chunks. So you'll probably want to smash them with a hammer to make them smaller. But when you're doing this, you want to be wearing safety gear because dry ice flying in your face and hitting your eyeballs, that would be, that would be bad. <laughs> also, make sure that if any chunks start to fly, to tell people not to touch them because that would give them frostbite. Or at least not to touch them with your bare hands. One of the things that you never want to do when working with dry ice is put the dry ice inside a container like this and then add the cap to it because the cap is threaded and it's also a lot stronger than any of this plastic around the outside of the bottle. So when the inside expands due to the sublimation, then the weakest point will be this outside of the bottle, like I already said, and it will expand so much that it'll cause this part to actually explode with a bunch of plastic shrapnel and stuff, which would be really bad. So, um, you don't really want to do that, but what you should use when doing, like, an explosion ex experiment or something with dry ice, then just use a container like this, um, with kind of a weak lid and no threading, and then that way when it expands on the inside, then the lid should be able to pop up relatively safely and easily and really awesomely, if that's a word. I don't know if that's a word. So let's try that then. We are going to take the lid off of our container and add in some dry ice. Probably just like a couple of chunks here. And add in some warm water. That looks really cool already. Okay, so some of the things to remember before you put the lid onto this container is to make sure that there's nothing above the container that it would possibly run into, such as your face or like a light or something, because that would really stink. And uh, yeah, just give it space to land and stuff. So here we go. Put the lid on here. And whoa, <laughs> there we go. I'm going to do that again because that was really fun. Hmm. 
I'm gonna do this all day, people. Come on. Awesome! For my hack of pumpkin, we need some hot water, a pumpkin, of course, a dry ice and soapy solution. To start, I'm going to put some dry ice in the pumpkin. Now, we can pour in some hot water. I need to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to be going up here. I'm going to use the soapy solution and a cloth to make a bubble over my pumpkin. It needs to be really wet, but not too wet, so let's squeeze it out just a little bit. And then you have a bubble coming out the top. Then we're done with the cloth. You can watch your bubble expand for a long time. even expand over your pumpkin like we're seeing here. It's going to pop soon. And it keeps going. What luck are we having right now? Let's quick rebubble it. See this one more time. I'll turn it around so you can see the slide off better. Looks like BB-8. His little head here and the body. One thing you can do is sometimes make a tornado. I know you've seen smoke rings made with a bottle before, but check this out.
bad hair day? Don't worry, because we've got the Halloween solution for all the jack-o'-lanterns out there. Okay, uh, so this is my pumpkin that I made, and basically it has a NeoPixel ray on the inside so it lights up and changes color, and it has this plastic bag on the top that's hooked up to a fan that's hooked up to a 9 volt battery, so it'll inflate like this into the ultimate Halloween hairstyle, so it's pretty neat. <laughs> 